two pages first. The Brief History of Time, page 69 and 72. This is a Time Life, uh, a Time Magazine article uh, where it chronicles heroic traits throughout the ages, throughout the eras, and they coincide with the areas of study that we have. Go ahead and flip the page through these two pages so you can see how it breaks it down. Okay, you can see each of these eras, they have different traits. We already talked about the epic heroes and what the, um, in the Anglo-Saxons, what they considered to be uh, heroic. Okay, what those values were, and they may give some examples. But then look at the modern days, look at the Victorian, look at the Renaissance, the type of traits. Okay, they're different. There is a Word document on Moodle that I want you to open up that allows you, it's a grid where you categorically put down what are the traits of the Renaissance. Give us some examples of heroes because you will be able to see a shift in what the beliefs and values are. And that will be very helpful come test time, at, uh, well test time, but definitely final exam time. Um, should you ever um, be questioned, you know, how has the role of a hero changed? You have a, a nice little study guide. Um, A Brief History of Heroes, the Time Life article. <clears throat> um, I set it up for you that, you know, uh, the line there at the bottom, that throughout history the idea of the hero has fluctuated and evolved to suit the culture of the times. I told you from the beginning of the class, that, um, or the, the semester, that you kind of needed to keep an eye on what those traits that are considered heroic. What do people consider to be heroic? And we started with epic hero, and we saw Beowulf and such. Um, we, we're seeing that kind of evolve and change just up through, uh, well, what would we just do, uh, Sir Gawain? You know, was he really a hero? Did he exhibit heroic traits? Uh, definitely. Early on, right? But then, you know, at the end, not as much. Um, and we will see that progress as time goes on all the way up to, you know, the modern unit when we get to 1984 and Winston. And that hero is much different than the Shakespearean, um, you know, character of Macbeth. And Macbeth is vastly different from Beowulf. And that stuff will make sense to you at the end. And this does a nice job of isolating the traits during these eras that we're going to study um, and giving some examples of individuals who, you know, embody um, those, those uh, traits and principles. Um, so there on the bottom of 69, the Renaissance hero. We're getting ready to study the Renaissance in a bit. Um, and they're talking about the Middle Ages in the left-hand column there. That uh, during that time, Roman Catholic scholars of medieval Europe stressed the afterlife. Greatness came from God, not man. You know, so the true heroes of Christendom were the martyrs, missionaries, and priests preparing for salvation. That changes completely during the Renaissance. Okay, and to see this shift, it's kind of a however you need to remember it, little bullet points or some sort of list, um, it, it would be helpful. Maybe that chart that we made uh, will be nice as well. Um, the Renaissance challenged that. They all emphasized man's capacity for greatness. And that's important to understand because you will see a shift in these next few eras of humanity and what wonderful things humans can do. Not so much about God and so on. And so we see man taking on more of a role. Um, so here there was a, a philosophy was focused at human values and capabilities, humanism, and that individual Petrarch. We'll talk about him when we get to sonnets uh, later on. On page 70, during the Renaissance, the classic idea of virtus, moral excellence and goodness. You know, a manly man was proficient in warfare, scholarship, government, literature, and even the art of love. There was a term nowadays called a renaissance man. If you are considered a renaissance man, you are good at several things. Okay, you do a lot of different things. Um, some individuals nowadays, uh, Brad Pitt and George Clooney, they're not just actors anymore. They're humanitarians. They're people that go and travel to war zones or uh, Africa and, and try to bring aid and, and help out, um, you know, different people. Um, and it, it's these individuals who are good at a lot of different things. Oh, and Clooney does writing. Oh, and he does directing. Oh, he does these. So it's, if you're good at a lot of different things, you might be referred to as a Renaissance man. And that's where the, uh, the term comes from was this particular era where being proficient in a lot of different things um, really makes you stand out. Uh, and the ideal of the Ro uh, Renaissance man remains a heroic value today. People really seem to cherish that. Um, some individuals, they talk about, you know, um, there's an individual called Machiavelli. Um, when you are... If you are referred to as a Machiavellian, that's usually not a good thing. Um, it usually means you're very arrogant and sure of yourself. Um, and look at what Machiavelli talks about um, on next that uh, 
Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Machiavelli's heroes were those who thought it was better to be feared than loved, who practiced cruelty rather than charity, who didn't base their conduct on firm principles or values, but on the winds of fortune. So what do you, you know, your personal advancement, your personal growth, that was heroic, and anything that you had to do to get to that was acceptable. As long as you were you know, up here, you're fine. And that's, to be Machiavellian isn't necessarily a compliment um, in society, but during this era, that was a certain rationale of thinking. Um, moving into the Romantic era, um, right before the Romantic era is a ter an era called the Enlightenment, and we'll talk about that. It's in the 1650s, 60s, and so on. Um, and during this, they came up with the, the heroism of humanity, a scientific approach to social problems and a belief in universal human progress were to be honored. And so focusing on the human, um, the human uh, uh, you know, journey and so on and what they could truly come up with. And moving into the Romantic era, um, Romantics criticized the elevation of logic and reason above feeling. Instead, through art, literature, music, and love, they celebrated the inner emotions of creative development of the human spirit. And they believed in the man's natural goodness and the call of individuals to develop their personality to the full. Feelings. This one should be simple because romantic. Feelings. They really were into feelings, not necessarily thinking and logic. They were more about how does this make you feel. And it wasn't all love stuff. When we get to the Romantic era, I don't think we read anything that's lovey, 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 lovey stuff. But feelings, okay, and pain maybe, and anguish, and those are feelings, and those things were talked about. Um, some heroes and visionaries of that era, Lord Byron, Wordsworth, Samuel Taylor, Coolridge, we'll, we'll read stuff from all those. When we get there, Victor Hugo, you might have heard of, uh, Garibaldi uh, from Italy, you may have heard of. Um, Victorian hero, we take a big shift into Victorian era. This is in the 1800s. Victorian era with Sherlock Holmes, that time period, you know, uh, Charles Dickens, uh, Jane Austen. When you think of those people, it's this era. Um, and uh, for the individuals of this era, heroic conduct was not a skill that could be taught. It was something individuals were gifted with. Moreover, heroes were not people to be emulated, but rather demigods to be acknowledged. That's kind of an interesting way to think about it compared to what we were, you know, in previous eras. And it was this way of thinking that, as it talks about in the book, that led people to praise, you know, visionaries and, and war heroes and Churchill and de Gaulle and really hold them to such high standards for such a, a common person. Um, in the 19th century, um, the quiet hero was kind of focusing on the unpublicized work of those who provided people with their basic needs was now considered heroic. So those individuals who weren't famous, but who took care of you know, the orphanage and all of those homeless kids who took them in and made sure that they were well fed and pushed them out into the world to be upstanding citizens, that was heroic. The unpublicized, the people that did it not for attention and not to print out poems and, and publicize yourself. Um, it was this quiet hero. And so we, we've seen crazy evolution of heroic traits just in these 200 years on these pages here. Um, and so you see it change uh, lastly into the 20th century um, where the thinkers of the mid 20th century fled from the idea of connecting militarism with greatness because early 20th century we had World War I, World War II, we had the Spanish-American War early in the you know, 1900s and so on. And so a lot of greatness was, wow, look at that heroics of those individuals who fought and did all of these wonderful things. And so we start to get away from putting heroic traits in with strictly military. And that's where we see the evolution. You know, a moral quality which must be vaguely described as decency um, by George Orwell. And so we'll talk about him. He wrote 1984. Uh, he was uh, an example of that um, to help push that philosophy along. And then lastly, the multicultural media age hero. Um, a lot more heroes are coming out nowadays. You know, individuals who, like I said about Clooney or, you know, Bono uh, from U2 goes out and does a lot of stuff for charity and to raise awareness. And, and um, you know, now that we have Twitter and Facebook, people can, you know, take campaigns to the next to the next level and, and get the word out and things like that and can create heroes from nowhere. Um, you know, we have heroes left and right. Um, there was a, a, a pilot, um, pilot um, Captain uh, Sollenberger, they called him Solly. He was the one who landed the plane in uh, the Hudson River in New York a couple years ago, if you recall. 
uh, some birds got hit up in their, their turbine and they had to land and they couldn't make it to the runway so he just kind of landed it right on the water of the Hudson River. Kind of heroic, quick thinking, great, but man that guy become, became uber famous. Truly did. Um, things just took off. Um, and a lot of celebrities tend to uh, really kind of stand out in this particular era just because of the, the multicultural media um, being able to get the word out and such. Um, good. Um, let's move.